Welcome to the Free From Wall Street Podcast, where we share how we have done over $200 million in real estate deals to create, preserve, and pass on generational wealth without the roller coaster ride of the stock market. If you're ready to start investing with purpose, visit freefromwallstreet.com. But for now, let's dive into this episode. Welcome back to the Free From Wall Street Podcast. My name is Stephen. Thanks for joining me again. Appreciate you guys stopping by. Today, we're going to talk about success to significant. So, you know, our tagline is investing with purpose. And the heart behind the business is how do we create a sustainable, profitable, cash flowing business? Great for our investors, great for us. And also take that money and put it to good use to make an impact on the world. So I think this is in the hearts and minds of a lot of investors. I think it's in a lot um, of operators as well. And so we're encouraging people to partner with us in our donor advised fund so that we can make a bigger impact around the world. And we've seen a lot of uh, amazing people jump on and partner with us. And we're super excited about it. But I want to talk a little bit today about what's it mean to move from success to significance and how can you do it? So I'm going to move from the John Maxwell Company's corporate leadership solutions. And we're going to go through the law of significance. So success is when you add value to yourself. Significance is when you add value to others. So first, I think it's super important that you you define success. What does success look like for you? In the sporting world, it means, you know, winning over somebody else. So if I beat you, I win and I'm successful. John Wooden talks about it and says, success is the peace of mind that is a direct result in the self-satisfaction in knowing you've given your best effort and become the best of which you are capable. So it's not about beating somebody else, just beating yourself from yesterday. What does success look like or significance look like? It's outward looking. It adds value to the life of somebody else, not necessarily just to yourself. And then are you being intentional or are you being good intentioned? So Andy Stanley talks about in his principle of the path, the direction determines your destination, not your intention. We may have heard that intentions about adding value to others, but it only matters what you're actually doing. So remember that direction determines your destination, not your intention. And this matters in business. It matters in investing. It matters in all these different areas because I think it's very easy to get knocked off track of what you're aiming for. And it happens to all of us, right? But if you don't have, and I was just with, uh, shout out to my, my boys, Jason and David Benham, I'm just with them this weekend uh, on a mastermind kind of retreat. And, you know, we're always talking about these grounding principles, things that bring you back to the focus of what it is, you know, so these grounding daily principles, these, gr- these daily grounding habits that you have. And for some of us, it's waking up and praying, reading the Bible, spending time with the Lord. Some, some of it's get up and get to the gym. Some it's just sit, have a cup of coffee, have some quiet time. You know, what, so whatever that is, those grounding habits, those will help you with your directionality so that you can get, don't get too far off track. Do you know your why? I mean, this is huge, right? Like this is, I think most of us think about what it is that we're doing. But if you ask yourself consistently, why am I doing this thing? It really gives you a deeper understanding as to what motivates you, what actions you're taking and why you're taking those actions. Also, is what I'm doing serving me? Is it something that's beneficial to me? Or is it something that's moving me away from my goals? So consider what makes you cry, laugh, and sing to help determine what your purpose is. That's what John Maxwell says. I love that. Number five, are you making the most of every day? So the Bible says that life is but a vapor, meaning time is short. And you have to be intentional about how you're using your time and Studies show that it's our habits, not our choices, that drive half of our day. Are your habits creating opportunities for you to grow and develop? Or are your habits positioning you to deliver significance in the lives of others? There's a great book out there. Uh, I think it's called Make Your Bed. It was by a Marine, I think, military general. Number six in John Maxwell's corporate solution is, did you make your bed today? It sounds silly, but it talks about the mindset of doing small things that compound into significant acts. So... If you don't start your day by making your bed, what else are you not doing? 
I rarely make my bed, frankly. I wake up and I get out of the bed before my wife does, so I don't have the opportunity to make it. But if she doesn't, and I come back to the bedroom and I see it unmade, and I make it, man, does she fall deeper in love with me? Acts of service and quality time are her love languages, so when I do things like that, she knows it's not really in my purview, but I'll do it for her. Are you exercising your creativity? Many people talk about um, not being creative, but we're all being, we're all born creative. I think it's super important to recognize that, you know, the creator of the universe created you to be creative, right? He's a creator. That's what he does. He likes us to do that as well. Are you waiting for optimal or are you looking for what's possible? If you're waiting for conditions to be perfect, take steps towards significant things, you may never take those sticks, those steps. Conditions are rarely optimal. Figure out what's possible and then begin today. You know, I, I've been going to masterminds and conferences for years now, and I don't know if there's anything more frustrating than when somebody asks for some advice, and then we see them a year later at the same conference, and I ask them how it went, and they just told me, you know, here's the list of reasons or list of excuses of why I didn't go and implement that thing that we shared with them that worked in our business. A lot of people have fear of getting started, and... Honestly, it's the only way to make any progress, right? Uh, if, if you want to lose a couple of pounds, you need to get outside and move around. You have to think about more intentionally what you're eating. If you're waiting for conditions to be optimal because, you know, you have a vacation coming up or it's going to be a holiday or look, it's always, there's always a reason, right? I love this quote. Excuses will always be there for you. Opportunity will not. So are you waiting for optimal conditions or looking for what's possible? So conditions are rarely optimal. Figure out what's possible. And then what do you want to be known for? This is a big question. You know, there's, there's a couple exercises um, that you can do to talk about, to, to really function in the way that you'd like to be remembered. And there's two exercises that I like to do. One is writing your eulogy. Right? What will people say at your funeral about you? I, recently, this has been a, a convicting part of my life because I, I've tried to think about what, what people would say about me when I'm gone and what I would like them to say. Right, The fact that we were good at real estate is not something I care tremendously about. It's my job and I love it. I love working for our investors. Um, but there's a couple things that I would like for people to say when they stand up there that are more important to me, right? So figure out what that is for you and write out a eulogy. And then you can start looking at some of the words and some of the functions of what people are saying about you that you love. And you can start to point more towards that. The second exercise, and this is, again, shout out to the Benham brothers for their expert ownership. If you haven't checked out expert ownership, by the way, just Google Benham expert ownership and their website will come up. Um, they just talk about, you know, strategies and tactics of how to implement business strategy that is very helpful. But the, the second strategy is uh, your, your future, your best future self, your best future self. And what that really looks like is picture yourself in two, five, 10, 20 years. You pick the, the length of time. Um, we like to do two or three years just because it's tangible and it's not that far away. Um, and what does your best future self look like? So what are you doing? What are your daily habits? When you meet yourself in the future, what have they done? What have they accomplished? What are they driving? What are they working on? What are they? What kind of husband and father and teacher are they? How's your spiritual life in two years? What, what daily habits have you created that are implemented into your life and you love? What kind of things have slipped into your life that you want to make sure you avoid, right? And then you sit down and you start to calendar those things out. You know, if you're a person that wants to wake up and get to the gym every day, you know, what, what does that look like in two to three years? For me, by the way, it's not waking up at 5 a.m. and going to the gym. I'd like to go a little bit later. I have to go now because my kids wake up at 6.30 and they got to get fed and get off to school and all that good stuff. And But my best future self, I think, would probably work out around 9 or 10. Just because I don't like to wake up super early. I like to sleep. And then in your best future self, what kind of financial decisions are you making? What kind of... Uh, you know, what kind of date nights do you have planned with your spouse? What kind of, you know, again, shout out to Jim Shields. What kind of family board meetings are you doing with your kids to make sure that you're intentional about those relationships? And then finally, 
John Maxwell asks, are you bigger on the inside than you are on the outside? As we grow in success and importance, which is the outside, it's important to remain even bigger on the inside. Bigger on the inside, people never let success get in the way of delivering significance to others, right? The, the quote is, uh, humility is not thinking about yourself less. It's thinking of, uh, it's, it's not, what is the quote? Humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. So that's, uh, I love that quote by C.S. Lewis. And so hope this is helpful to you guys. I mean, we're just sitting here, getting, came back from this retreat. We had um, a lot of time for reflection, a lot of time in prayer and thinking about what our purpose is. So I wanted to get on here and just talk about, you know, how are we moving from success to significance? And you can do it today. Right when when we were trying to figure out how to give more abundantly now than before we quote made it, we, you know, very clearly heard that we could start giving away one percent of this next deal, two percent of the deal after that, three percent or four percent of the deal after that. So you don't have to wait until your coffers are full to figure out when you can start to be significant in other people's lives. You can start today. I encourage you to do so. You're going to be hearing more about this type of stuff from other entrepreneurs. In a couple of weeks, we are shifting to investing with purpose. We're excited to relaunch and rebrand this podcast as investing with purpose. We'll still give you some of the great content about the volatility of the stock market and alternative investments and things, but we're also going to start bringing in other entrepreneurs and hear more about their success to significant stories and how they are investing with purpose. So stay tuned for that. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening to the Free From Wall Street podcast. If you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review and let us know what you think.